In this next portion of the President's Quiz app, we're going to uh, code the main quiz engine. So here I am in the quiz.java, which is our main activity. And I've gone ahead and defined private static variables that are going to be used to refer to each of the elements that we previously uh, put together in our layout. So for example, if we look, for example, at the uh, item that stores the picture for each question that in our app on the uh, layout side is called picture underscore IV for image view. And now there is a corresponding variable on the Java side called image view IV dot picture. I continue to use this standard where if the prefix here describes the item, it's on the Java side. And if, the, if it comes as a suffix, uh, then it's on the layout side. All right, so we have uh, one static variable for the picture, one that holds uh, the radio group, which uh, has our three buttons in it. And then this button here is one extra radio button I've defined, and it's going to hold the ID of whichever button was selected by the user. Okay, here are the original three radio buttons, the A, B, and C that are provided uh, on the screen. And here is the text view box that holds the question itself. And here is the Java variable that points to the submit button. Here I've got two additional instance variables, one which is going to tell us which question we're on. And here this is the array list uh, pointer that's going to contain the questions. So right now, all I have is this onCreate method, which was provided to me by the main activity at startup. And now I'm getting ready to code the, the rest of the quiz app. So when the app first starts, we're going to initialize everything. So I'm going to create a method called initialize, and I'm going to call it on this onCreate method. So let's go ahead and create that method now. Private void initialize. There we go. And now let's think about for a second all the things that we need to do inside this initialization method. Well, we're going to need to cast each of these static variables so that we can establish a relationship up between the Java side and the layout side. So let me go ahead and do that now. I've done that here for the first variable. You might want to take a moment here and stop this video and see if you can figure out what the remainder should look like. All right, I've gone ahead now and cast all the buttons except for the uh, selected button. That button is going to hold the uh, address of whichever button was selected by the user when the submit button is pressed. And we haven't gotten to that part of the code yet. But all these other buttons here and uh, items have been cast appropriately. And the next thing we need to do is we need to initialize our uh, non-static variables. So let me go ahead and do that. So current. All right, so I've initialized the current question index to zero, which means we'll start at the first question. And I've created an empty array list that's going to hold uh, each of our questions. The next thing that we need to do is we need to load up the four questions in our quiz into this array list. So let me do that. OK, so here I've added four questions to my questions array list. And notice that I've used anonymous uh, objects to load up each of the questions. Also notice that the image index for each of the questions is currently set to zero. We'll use the images uh, for each question in a separate tutorial. For now, I'm just going to temporarily set them to zero, and I'm not going to uh, try and test that as we initially test this app. We'll test without the uh, images initially. Now lastly, when we start up the app, we want to uh, start by displaying question number zero. So I'll uh, create a method here uh, called display question. And then I'll start by giving it the current question index. And I put one too many R's in there. And this will initially um, start by displaying the current uh, question number zero. I haven't written this method yet, so let me write the skeleton for that next.
and this index variable in the parameter list is going to define which question is going to get displayed. All right, so uh, we just uh, leave that as a skeleton for now, and let's see what else we need. We're also going to need another method that lets us advance to the next question. This one will not need any parameters. And we're also going to need to tell the system that when the submit button is pressed, uh, we need to take some action. So we need to create an action listener for that. So let's do that in this same initialization method. So here I'm going to create a uh, set on click listener for the submit button. And right in here, I'm going to use an anonymous inner class from Java. OK, so we've declared and defined uh, an anonymous class and object all in one step. And now uh, this is the method that's going to get run each time the submit button gets pressed. Eventually, I'll put some code in here that checks to see if the right answer was given. But right now, I think I'll just call the advance method. Now, normally, I would put the word this in front to show that it's this current object's advance method. You'll see that that won't work here. And the reason why is that we're not actually in the uh, quiz object right here. Keep in mind that we've uh, defined and declared a new object. So this, uh, the, this pointer here is not applicable. So we'll just go with the advance without any kind of a prefix. And now let's go ahead and code the advance and the display uh, methods. In the advanced method, what we want to do is we want to increment the uh, current index. Uh, but then if we go past the end of the question list, we want to go back to the beginning of the quiz and go back to question 0. So the best way to do that is by using the modulo operator. So what I've done here is I've added 1 to the current question index. But then if it goes past the end, I'm using the modulo operator to roll this back to 0. And I'm using the questions.size to figure out how many questions are currently in the quiz. Now that I've updated the uh, question pointer, I need to display the next question. OK, so that basically is all we need in the advanced method. The display question method is going to be a little bit more complicated because I have to do all the work of updating all the information on the display uh, on the phone. Eventually, we're going to display a picture for each question. But right now, we're going to leave that blank. I'll just leave a comment in here to remind myself that eventually need to update the picture uh, for the current question. Uh, we need to update the text for the question, so let's do that. OK, so I'm going to uh, take the Java variable that I have that points to the question box, and I'm going to call the setText method on it. And the text that I'm going to get is by asking uh, the ArrayList member of the current question uh, to return its question text. And that's how I load up the question. And similarly, I'm going to use the same strategy to load up the radio buttons now for the three multiple choice uh, items. OK, I've gone ahead now and updated the uh, A, B, and C choices on the three radio buttons. And I'm almost at the point now where I can start to do some basic uh, unit testing to see if I can advance to each question, if the test rolls over back to question 0, and if the information for each question, uh, except for the picture, uh, shows up on, on the screen. Let's, in fact, go ahead now and run the app and see how far along we are. All right, so the app has initialized now. And it looks like we've got some minor layout issues. It looks like some of the radio buttons are appearing right on top of the text box that has the question. And this third radio button is a little bit off. We need to move it a little bit to the left. 
Uh, right now we've coded the quiz so that if we hit the submit button it goes forward. Let's just try that. So it looks like that's working. And let's see if it rolls back to the first question after the end. So that looks like that's fine as well. Let's see if we can select one of the radio buttons and if that works. Okay, so here. Okay, but here I see that um, if I select the radio button, then when it goes to the next question, the selection remains. So that's a minor issue that we have to take care of. We should clear all the radio buttons each time we go to a new question. But overall, it looks like we've done a pretty good job. And I'm going to fix these layout issues now and uh, take one more test. So to make sure that uh, each time a new question is displayed, none of the selections from the previous question carry over, I'm going to try to uncheck all the radio buttons here in the group. Okay, and that's the only thing I should need to do to clear the entire group. Let's run the app one more time. I've also cleaned up a lot of my layout issues, so hopefully it should look a lot nicer now. All right, so now I've moved the radio buttons down a little bit, and uh, you can see that I've aligned the three radio buttons together. And here we're still able to sort through the questions and this time hopefully when I select one of the answers and I go to the next one you see that it becomes unchecked so here uh, and looks like we've got the basics of it working and now for the last part what we need to do is we need to add the code to check to see if we've got the right answer or not and to display some messages to the user saying whether they got the right answer or the wrong answer and we do not want to uh, advance to the next question until the user presses the right answer for the current question so other than adding the pictures, the only thing remains is to figure out when to advance to the next question or not. So let's go back and look at the uh, action listener that we put together earlier for the submit button. And right now we just have it uh, set to advance regardless. What we're going to do here instead is we're going to check to see if we've got the right answer or not. And so we'll only call the advance button if we got the right answer. Otherwise, uh, we'll stay on the current question. Okay, so I've modified the uh, action listener to call this new method to check to see if the answer is right. I haven't coded this method yet, but if this method returns that the answer is correct, then I'll display a message to the user using the toast system that they got the right answer and we'll advance to the next question. And if they did not get it right, then we'll display a, a different toast message telling the user that the, uh, the answer that they gave is wrong. So now I still have to uh, create this method called answer is right which is going to be a boolean method okay so what I've done is I've uh, coded this method now called answer is right and I've coded it inside this uh, anonymous class and what I do is I initially create an answer variable and set it to some illegal option here I've chosen X and uh, what we want to do is we want to start by getting uh, figuring out which choice of the user selected so I'm going to first go to the radio group and ask it which button was checked and I'm going to save the ID of that button and then I'm going to uh, take that ID and convert it back to a radio button so now this RB selected is the radio button that has been selected and what I do is I just compare the address of the radio button that's been selected with the choices of A, B, and C to figure out uh, which is the answer that the user chose and then I ask the questions uh, array list to return whether the selected answer is uh, the same as the correct answer in the question uh, using this syntax here. So this completes uh, our uh, President's Quiz app other than the, uh, the pictures which we're going to show in the last part. Uh, but let's go ahead and try this out and see how it goes. Okay, so now the app has initialized, and let's uh, the the correct answer here is Roosevelt. But let's let me just try one of the other uh, choices here, Eisenhower. And when I hit the submit button, you see it says that it's uh, wrong. Now, if I put in the correct answer, it should uh, say right, and it should advance to the next question. 
Okay, so here you can see that it says right, and it has indeed advanced to the next question. Watergate president, that's Nixon. Let's just try that. See, it says right. And now this one here should be Carter. Let me try a couple of wrong choices. FDR is the wrong choice. Nixon is the wrong choice. And finally, Carter is the right choice. Okay, and if I don't submit anything at all, it should stay wrong and it should stay on the current question. So it looks like everything is working. We just have to add the picture.